My Catholic Faith, number 56, The Bishop of Rome. It is Christ's will that we should reverence his ministers as himself. This is why Catholics pay the greatest reverence to Christ's vicar, the Pope, their universal father. On this account, the title, His Holiness, is given him. Out of respect for his office, the Holy Father is given privileges not granted to other bishops. As a temporal sovereign, he has a court and guards. He has a standard and seal. He has ambassadors. On solemn occasions, he is carried in the papal chair called Sidia Gestoria. Did Christ intend that the special power of chief teacher and ruler of the entire church should be exercised by Peter alone? Christ did not intend that the special power of chief teacher and ruler of the entire church should be exercised by Peter alone, but intended that this power should be passed down to his successor, the Pope, Bishop of Rome, who is the vicar of Christ on earth and the visible head of the church. Number one. St. Peter lived for a short time at Antioch. Then he went to Rome and there fixed his official residence permanently. It was there, and as Bishop of Rome, that he died as a martyr some twenty years later. The church was not to die with Peter. Therefore, his official rank and dignity and powers were to be handed on to his successors from generation to generation. In the same way, Successors to a civil office acquire all the powers attached to the office. Number two. Thus, the Bishop of Rome, the lawful successor of St. Peter, is what Peter was, the vicar of Christ and visible head of the church. Christ is the true and invisible head of the church. But its visible head is the Bishop of Rome, our Holy Father, the Pope because he is the successor of St. Peter. No one but the Bishop of Rome has ever claimed a supreme authority over the whole church. Therefore, either he is St. Peter's successor, or St. Peter has no successor, and the promise of Christ had failed. Number three. The supremacy of the Bishop of Rome over all Christendom has been disputed because of the perversity of men and the power of evil. It has been denied by unruly sons. The very fact that it was disputed shows that it existed. In the same way, even the authority of God himself has been questioned. His very existence has been denied. From the beginning, too, parental authority has been defied. The authority of lawful rulers has been attacked. The denials, defiance, and attacks have not destroyed the existence of such authority. Does God die because men deny his existence? Quote, the fool said in his heart, There is no God. End quote. Psalm 52. Has the Bishop of Rome always been looked upon as the head of the church? Yes, the Bishop of Rome has from apostolic times been looked upon as a universal head of the church. Number one. From earliest times, the titles High Priest and Bishop of Bishops have been given to the Bishop of Rome. Appeals were made to him, and disputes were settled by him. The third successor of St. Peter was Pope St. Clement. A dispute in the church at Corinth was referred to him for decision. He wrote letters of remonstrance and admonition to the Corinthians, and they submitted to his correction. At that time, very near Corinth, the Apostle John was still living. Why did the Corinthians, instead of appealing to faraway Rome and Clement, not refer their troubles to the Apostle John, Bishop of Ephesus? Evidently, because Rome's authority was universal, while that of Ephesus was local. There were numerous cases of appeal throughout the long history of the church. All were referred to Rome. In the 5th century, when Theodoret, bishop of Cyrus in the east, was deposed, 
he appealed to Pope Leo, and Pope ordered him reinstated. The Pope was everywhere recognized as head of the Church, not only in the West, but in the East, up to the Great Schism of the ninth century. Number 2. With one voice, the Fathers of the Church pay homage to the Bishop of Rome as their superior. All of them recognized the Pope as supreme head. St. Ambrose said in the 4th century, Where Peter is, there is the Church. Number 3. General councils were not held without the presence of the Bishop of Rome or his representative. No council was accepted as universal or general unless its acts received the approval of the Bishop of Rome. At the Council of Chalcedon in the year 451, the Pope's letter was read to the assemblage of bishops, and they cried with one voice, Peter has spoken by Leo. Let him be an anthema who believes otherwise. As late as the year 1439, in the Council of Florence, the Greeks who wished to return to the Church acknowledged the primacy of the Bishop of Rome, the Pope. Number four, every nation converted from paganism has received the faith from missionaries specially sent by the Pope or by bishops acknowledging the Pope as their head. St. Patrick was sent by Pope Celestine to Ireland. St. Palladius was sent by the same Pope to Scotland. St. Augustine was sent by Pope Gregory to England. St. Remigius went to France under the protection of the See of Rome. St. Boniface was sent by Pope Gregory II to Germany and Bavaria, and so on. Pontifical Decorations The Holy See confers various titles, orders, decorations, and other honors on certain persons, usually lay people who in some special manner have distinguished themselves in furthering the well-being of humanity and of the Church. They are listed here in the Order of Importance. The Supreme Order of Christ was started by Pope John the Twenty Second in 1319. Today, it is the Supreme Pontifical Order of Knighthood, conferred only on very rare occasions. The Order of the Golden Spur follows the Order of Christ as a pontifical decoration. It has one class of 100 knights and is awarded only to those who have furthered the cause of the Church by outstanding deeds. It is bestowed also to non-Catholics. The Order of Pius IX has three classes, Knights of the Grand Cross, Commanders, and Knights. It is awarded also to non-Catholics. The Order of St. Gregory the Great was founded by Pope Gregory the Sixteenth in 1831. It has two divisions, civil and military, each of which is divided into three classes, Knights of the Grand Cross, Commanders, and Knights. The Order of St. Sylvester, instituted in 1841, like the Order of St. Gregory, has three classes of knights. The Order of the Holy Sepulchre is considered one of the oldest of pontifical honors. It is today highly prized in Europe. It has been bestowed on kings and nobles, on heads of republics, on persons outstanding in arts, letters, and sciences, on those who in special manner have served the Church, unlike other orders, this is bestowed besides on clerics and women. The medal, Pro Ecclesia et Pontifice, was instituted by Leo XIII, that great Pope of the Working Man, in 1888. It is awarded in recognition of special services to the Church and the Pope. The Benamarenti medal was instituted in 1832 by Gregory XVI of two classes, civil and military, in recognition of outstanding daring or courage. <laughs>